Welcome everybody to this week's 10 a.m. Collider Coffee Break, where we just take some time with you to let you know what's been going on at Collider. As a reminder to all of you, Ro Collider is a Rochester-based nonprofit that supports our entrepreneurs. So thanks for joining us today, and I'll send it over to Jamie uh, to let you know what he's been working on this week. So thanks so much, Amanda. Uh, first thing I wanted to talk about this week was uh, one of our favorite startups, Sherpa. I like to say it's a Collider grown startup as the two co-founders met here within our co-working space. But we wanted to take a moment to really celebrate and applaud Sherpa for making it to the finals of the Minnesota Cup in their division. So we just wanna you know, say Chris, Andy and, his, and their team, you've done a great job. We're cheering you on in the finals and uh, we'd like to see you of course take it all. So hats off to Sherpa and all the great work they've put in over the last couple of years to really build an amazing product that is really a Rochester grown product. So awesome job guys and, and we're looking forward to seeing you in that final round. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about was Calm Connect. So some of you may remember Calm Connect from their participation in the Assistive Tech Challenge, among other uh, challenges and pitch competitions here in the region. The Calm Connect is, is, has, was started by uh, two students at St. Mary's who have this innovative idea for uh, sort of projecting um, positive messages when, when you're in, a in the hospital. So um, literally it is projecting positive messages on the ceiling using a projector and some uh, software that they are developing. Um, and so I had the fortune uh, to chat with them this week and learn more about their product and um, and actually learned that they are doing a pilot um, in, in the Winona area with the local hospitals. So I'm just always excited to see two young entrepreneurs get their start and uh, I'm wishing them all the best and hopefully um, continued success with their product at Calm Connect. And lastly, I had a great conversation this week on Ecosystem North with Frank Diskalki, the Director of Intelligence for Medical Alley Association. Frank and I have known each other for the past seven years. He's been a fantastic supporter for all the great entrepreneurial activity happening here in Rochester. And it was just great to, to learn a little bit more about him, to really understand his background, where he came from, um, what he's done for the past 15 years in Medical Alley, which is just an amazing, amazing, I, I couldn't believe that, you know, he's been in that work for 15 years, but he's definitely um, the master connector when it comes to uh, business connections. Uh, he's, I've learned a lot from him and I'm really excited that uh, he paints a very positive picture of the future of where everything's going. Uh, in the medical entrepreneurial and a bit or industry here in Minnesota. So uh, check it out. Uh, it should be released Friday at noon. So that would be about 12 o'clock as you know, I think this airs at 10 o'clock. Um, you'll see Frank's uh, video uh, at noon. You can also, uh, it sh if you subscribe to our audio podcast for Ecosystem North, it should appear uh, right in your favorite podcatcher as soon as it's released. So uh, check that out. It was a great discussion and it was, I was just really, really so fortunate to be able to get an hour of his time to chat with him. So um, that's all I have for this week. Uh, turning it back to Amanda. The thing I wanted to talk about this week is our ecosystem navigators. So right now we're in the process of hiring three ecosystem navigators as part-time contractors for 15 hours per week. So a little more information about these navigators. They're not business consultants. They, they're more of community connectors. So they'd be meeting with entrepreneurs within the female, black and Hispanic entrepreneurial community here in Rochester. They'd be listening to their needs and they'd be connecting them in to resources that would further their business in the community. So one big thing that those of you listening can do if, for us, if you know somebody that would be a great fit for this job, please let them know that we're hiring. Please forward on that information to them. It's a very simple application. It's just a cover letter and your resume sent to hello at collider.mn by August 28th. And again, we're looking for three different individuals, one to serve 
uh, female entrepreneurs, one to work within the Hispanic business community and one to work within the black business community here in Rochester. And you can email us or message us as well with any questions about these positions. The second thing I wanted to talk to you about is Collider's Basics of Entrepreneurship course. So we are in the final week of this program that was to go from idea to really deeply understand your customer. So this upcoming Tuesday, we have kind of our celebratory end of the program. Uh, and we want to learn too. We want to hear from the people, the entrepreneurs in that program, see what they like, see what they didn't like, and assess um, what our educational program will look like going forward, because we always want to make sure that we're meeting the needs of the entrepreneurs and prospective entrepreneurs within our community. But we're really thrilled with the progress, the dedication that uh, the individuals who have participated in this basics of entrepreneurship class have had, and we look forward to learning from them and serving more education in the future. And lastly, I wanted to briefly share with you the stories we talked about on Rochester Rising this week. So on the Rochester Rising podcast, we shared episode 189, where we talked with local small business owner Katrina Pullum. Katrina and her husband own Air Insanity, which is an indoor trampoline park. But she's had many different roles before getting there. She started her career in banking, but also uh, spent some time in North Carolina as a race car builder for NASCAR and also teaches women's archery. So she talks a little bit about how she got to where she is today and about what the coronavirus and a three and a half month shutdown looked for that business and how they've been reopening. So check it out on our podcast. You can find that on the Rochester Rising website at rochesterrising.org. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on our YouTube channel. So you can listen in anywhere. Also this week, we shared um, again, the, the wonderful video from our latest Collider Spark series with Natalie Nixon. She's a Philadelphia based author, speaker and creative consultant. And she was talking about this creativity week. So how do you instill wonder, play and rigor into the workplace to foster creativity, to foster leaps in innovation and what that in reality looks like in our organizations. So we recorded a great webinar and on the Rochester Rising podcast, we also shared the full transcript of Natalie's discussion. Um, it was definitely, you know, a very designed thinking, creative, inspirational talk. So please check it out. You can read the transcript or watch the video, um, highly encourage it. She's a great thinker um, from outside this community, bringing those ideas to Rochester. So that is it for me today. I just wanna leave you with two things that would be amazing ways for you to help us. The first, again, is if you know someone who would be a great ecosystem navigator, please let them know that we're hiring contract positions. The second is that wherever you're listening in, I want you to take five seconds follow us on that platform and like our video so that others can find it. Those are the best ways you can help us. I'll send it over to Jamie for any final thoughts. So my final thought this week is we're really just kind of sitting down and taking stock of where we are with the Collider Foundation. Um, we're looking at all the events, all the educational things that we've done in the past, all all the great connections we made for people, and we're trying to forge a path ahead. You know, obviously COVID has, has hurt us as well as basically everyone else. So we're just trying to figure out, you know, what next steps do we make? It always, of course, laser focused on helping the entrepreneurs first. And I think we're coming up with some really cool uh, things that uh, I think will uh, continue to serve our entrepreneurial community. So we're looking forward to, uh, working towards that and hopefully we'll have some new stuff for you here in the next couple of months. So with that, I'll send it back to Amanda. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today and we'll see you here next week again at 10 a.m.